So we're back on Wave Accounting. Let's go ahead and look at the chart of accounts. You can find the chart of accounts by going to the accounting section in the left panel. So let's click on that. And this is your chart of accounts in Wave. Now I want to point out to you the action section inside of the chart of accounts. Most of what we're going to be doing in the cleanup today is going to take place in this action section. And what you see in the action section will vary depending on the type of account. So I want to get you familiar with these types of accounts right now. The first type of account that you'll find is called a system account. A system account is an account that WAVE requires in order to carry out certain automated functions. For this reason, the accounts can neither be edited nor deleted. It's easy to find a system account because in the action section next to that account it will actually say system account and the option to edit and delete are removed from that line. A good example of a system account is the accounts receivables on my chart of accounts. The second type of account that you might come across is what I call a standard accounting term. Standard accounting terms are specific naming conventions that are very typical in the accounting industry. For this reason, you, can't, you can choose to add or delete these accounts, but you cannot edit their names. A good example of a standard accounting term is the Machinery, Equipment, Furnitures, and Fixtures account in my chart of accounts. You can see that the option to delete is a, available there, the circle with the X, but there is no option to edit that account. Likewise, there are certain accounts that are renameable system accounts. These are accounts where the system still requires these accounts for automated purposes, but it does allow you to rename those accounts if you wish. An example of this type of account would be the Owner's Investments and Drawings account in my chart of accounts. Next to this account, you'll notice that the, the circle with the X, the option to delete, is no longer available, but the option to edit is. And then finally, the last type of account, and most common one you'll come across, is a fully customizable account. These accounts have both the option to edit and delete those accounts. Now that we understand the Actions section, the first thing that I typically do when I'm looking at a chart of accounts is going through the chart of accounts and deleting any types of accounts that I don't particularly need or don't apply to my specific business. For example, maybe it included a rent account, but I don't rent, I work out of my home, so I can delete the rent. Maybe there's a vehicle insurance account, and I don't have any vehicles as a business, so I can delete that account. So just go through and look at ones that you don't anticipate using in the future, and go ahead and delete them. Remember, though, that nothing you delete is actually permanent. If you decide at a later date that you actually do need that account, then you can always go back and add it. So I typically tend to err on the side of deleting too much at the beginning because I'm not afraid of going back and adding things later on. And it keeps my chart of accounts small and it makes it easier to manage your transactions as you're moving forward. Now, of course, there are some system accounts that may not apply to your business, specifically the ones related to foreign currency exchange. So you won't be able to delete them even though you're never going to use them. Don't worry about that. They don't show up on any reports unless you actually use them, so go ahead and just leave them there. But any of the ones that have the option to delete, go ahead and delete them right now. Alright, so we're going to go down this list really quick and we're going to delete some of these accounts. Like for example, dues and subscriptions, I'm not subscribing to anything in particular. Uh, these are typically for like magazines or associations or things like that. So I'll go ahead and get rid of that one for now. You know, I may join a chamber of commerce or something later on, but I can always add it back if I need to. Uh, insurance for vehicles, I don't have a vehicle as a business, so let's go ahead and delete that one. And so you'll just continue on in this process of deleting accounts as you go until you've got a nice small cleaned up chart of accounts. The next process we'll want to do is edit any of the names of existing accounts to make them something that's more meaningful for us. So sometimes the naming conventions in here are very typical to the accounting world, but they may not make a lot of sense to you and so you'll want to be able to edit them to something that you can understand is meaningful to you. As we mentioned before there are certain 
uh, standard accounting terms that you're not going to be able to edit, but anything that you want to edit that you can, go ahead and do that. Um, usually I'll start in the income section, that's where it needs the most help. So I've got consulting income over here, but maybe I sell some products on the side. So I come into my sales and rename that as product sales. So just a couple of things to keep in mind as you're renaming your chart of accounts. First of all, Wave Accounting at this time does not have any subgrouping capabilities. So if I have a particular group of expenses that I want to track together for trend analysis, I don't have any kind of subheading that I can group them together under. Also, Wave Accounting sorts in its reports by alphabetical order. So even though I may want certain, trend, certain expense categories grouped together, because their names are not in alphabetical order, they may be scattered throughout my income statement. To get around this, what you can do is create kind of a header title at the beginning of the name in order to force them to group together in alphabetical order. So a good example, you, you can see here on my chart of accounts that the computer expenses all have computer followed by a dash and then the name of the actual expense account. This forces all of those accounts to group together. Also, you might note that in the expense section, there isn't a division between your operating expenses and your cost of goods sold. On the income statement, they do split out, so you can see them separately, but when you're looking through your chart of accounts, they're all mixed in together. So that can make it a little confusing to find your cost of goods sold accounts and be able to tell the difference between those versus your other operating expenses. If you have just certain specific items that are related to your cost of goods sold, they may be easy for you to find because you're familiar with them. But if you're having a hard time coming across your, your cost of goods sold and keeping them separated in your mind, you may also use the same convention to put like COGS for cost of goods sold and a dash at the beginning of all of your cost of goods sold accounts so that they group together in your chart of accounts and make them easier to find and edit. That's an option that's up to you. If you do put that convention at the beginning, all of your cost of goods sold accounts will show up that way with COGS at the beginning of them when they show up on your income statement. So it just depends on you know functionality versus presentation, what's easier for you to use. Personally, I typically am familiar with my cost of goods sold accounts, so I don't do that, but I have seen clients that do, and it works just fine. So once we've gone through and renamed the existing accounts, the last step we have in cleaning up our chart of accounts is creating new accounts. So up at the top of your accounts list, you can add a new account with this button right here. And you can see that when you go to add a new account, you can search by account name or you can search by the groupings that are related to the accounting reports that I showed you earlier. This is why understanding those reports and how the accounts are grouped are so important for setting up your chart of accounts in WAVE. So let's say we want to set up some cost of goods sold accounts because my particular chart of accounts doesn't have any set up right now. I can come to my expense section because a cost of goods sold is a type of expense and you can see that your operating expenses are down below and your cost of goods sold accounts are up above. So let's click on cost of goods sold and there's only one subcategory, cost of goods sold. And then based on my type of business, it's going to make some recommendations for me. Merchant account fees and subcontracted services. Now, if I don't find what I'm looking for there, I can always click show other and it will show me the whole list of recommended accounts for, for cost of goods sold. And I can select whatever I'm looking for. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and select the merchant account fees. Now, Merchant Accounts Fees is a fully customizable account, so I can edit the name if I want. I'm not going to, so I'm just going to say Save and go with the name that they created. Now, let me show you what a standard accounting term account would look like if I were to go in and create that one. So, let's go into my Assets section, select a fixed asset, a long-term asset, go ahead and create an accumulated amortization account for my machinery, equipment, furnitures, and fixtures. This is what it says. None of the fields for this account are editable. Are you sure you want to add this account? So it's just letting me know this is a standard term. I can create it. I can delete it, but I can't edit the name. That's fine. I'll go ahead and save it. 
Now, when Wave first came out, a lot of accounts were standard accounting terms. They did not have the capability of editing, and that frustrated a lot of people. Wave has eased up on a lot more accounts and have allowed a lot more flexibility. If you ever find, though, that you just can't get an account that you want that has an editable name, then you can always go into another category. So let's look at uh, income for a change. Go into income, and you'll notice there's an other income folder. And then within the other income folder, there's an other income item. So most folders inside of your account setup are going to have an other category for those one-off things that are very specific to your company that they may not have standard accounts for in the chart of accounts. So you can always come in and use these and rename them to whatever you want them to be. So now that you've learned how to use the other accounts, I'm going to caution you against using them unless absolutely necessary. As much as possible, try to find a specific pre-built WAVE account for your chart of accounts before going to other. The reason being is WAVE is going to automatically bring in and categorize your bank transactions for you. We'll learn how to set that up in a little bit. But this process of automation will work much more efficiently if Wave is familiar with the accounts that you're using. It knows that certain restaurants belong in a food category. And as long as you choose a food category, it can automatically categorize them for you. But if you're using another account, Wave doesn't know what those other accounts are. And it makes it much more difficult for it to automatically categorize your transactions. So you'll find that your workload will be a lot less and the system will be able to do a lot more of your data entry if you're using Wave's standard accounts as much as possible. So I would highly encourage that process. However, if there are things that are very specific to your business that you cannot find in the standard accounts, go ahead and use these other accounts as a way to custom design your specific accounting needs. Once you've finished adding all of your new accounts, then your initial chart of account setup is complete. But don't feel like a chart of accounts is static, that you set it up once and you never touch it again. The chart of accounts is going to flow and, and develop as your company develops and grows as well. Certain things are going to become more important for you to track and analyze as your business changes in the industry that it's in. So, don't feel like you can't go back and edit or change or add new accounts later on. Hopefully this is an ongoing process that you do on an annual basis. Also, I highly encourage that you involve your CPA or tax accountant in your setup process for your chart of accounts. The success that you're going to get from Wave Accounting is going to depend a tremendous amount on how good your chart of accounts is. And if you're going to pay for any kind of advisory help in the setup process of your Wave Accounting, the chart of accounts is probably the best place to spend that money. So, if possible, I highly encourage that you get a professional in the accounting industry to look at your chart of accounts with you and compare it to what's specific in your industry and what kinds of trends are important for your industry to understand. Setting up your chart of accounts properly will make your accounting easier to use, easier to understand, and much more efficient to help you make better management decisions and get more success out of your small business. Thank you for watching the Bootstrapper's Guide to Wave Accounting. If you found this video useful, I encourage you to click the like button below, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and share this video with other entrepreneurs. Doing so will help us to continue creating more videos like this one for you and other Wave users here on the Accounting Lab.